Yi Hu, uh, will be talking about uh, how uh, you know Beam Port Bus schemas uh, enable using JDBC IO uh, from Python SDK uh, via cross language, and I will go SDK as well, so you can use uh, JDBC IO from other SDKs available within Beam. Uh, Yi has been uh, working primarily on Beam IO connectors and related stuff uh, for a number of years now, and he's a you know engineer at Google and also a committer for Apache Beam. Yes, thank you, Chan. Yeah, I'm, I'm Yi. Yes, um, today I'm talking about the cross language JDBC I/O and um, as an example of the cro gener generic cross language uh, I/O connectors that is uh, built on top of the Beam Portable Schemas. So in the last uh, talk, uh, just uh, uh, Ahmed mentioned uh, something about the. Beam portable schemas, basically, like for example, being rows, and um, why there are some restrictions for those being rows and uh, restriction for the types, and uh, I will all cover those in this talk. So basically, um, so it's a JDBC IO and it's also a portable being schema. So I will first go through with the being JDBC IO. And then I dive deep into the portable Bing schema, which is a more lower level, low level um, architectures. And uh, finally, go back to the JDBC IO in the context of the Python uh, cross language and show some use cases. And uh, yeah, finally, also Ahmed just mentioned that we have some restrictions, and uh, that's fine. We have some work around uh, to deal with those unsupported types. So let's begin with the JDBC and the JDBC IO. So JDBC is um, actually a very traditional or long-standing um, API in the Java. So I don't uh, quite remember how it uh, begins, but it's, it's existing for a long time. It's a common API that defines how a client may connect or make access to a SQL database and in Java language. So it's a built-in Java um, package for the JDK, uh, like in Java SQL or Java X SQL for the extensions. It's standardized. So it, it, because it's standardized, it's, we can use a single API, single interface to connect with different uh, SQL or traditional SQL database. This is, um, like for example, the the more traditional uh, ones, or more recently become popular, popular uh, PostgreSQL. So these all are all the relational databases, and they all use the common uh, API called the JDBC Java database connectivity to uh, connect with our Java application. In terms of the Beam, the application is just a, a Beam pipeline like that. For both the read and the write, and the JDBC I/O is actually one of the earliest I/O connector in Bing. And in in this morning's talk, uh, Alex Alex's talk, and he mentioned uh, the early country built into the JDBC I/O. So it can be uh, back to the when Bing was an incubating project of of Apache, and uh, back to like seven years ago, it has a three-digit uh, issue number. So it's in the uh, IOJDBC mo um, namespace or module in Java SDK, and uh, it basically provides a P transform for read and a one for write. And uh, more recently, they are community key contributor, uh, not quite a recent, like maybe more than one year ago in 2.32, and uh, they entered a uh, read with partitions which achieves the parallel reading from a JDBC database. And before that, the reader was really just a, a single thread, so it does not scale well. So on the other hand, in the Python SDK, the JDBC um, transform is a cross-language transform. So it calls the Java SDK uh, under the hood. So it's, uh, the first time it's implemented was like 2.24. And uh, we, for being each SDK, the naming it follows its language um, convention. And for Python, we 
we usually use like different class names for p transforms and just read from JDBC right to JDBC and uh, similarly like read from BigQuery right to BigQuery. So inside of each SDK, these names are consistent. This is Python SDK and the Go SDK is even more recent, 2.37 sometime last year and uh, also adds read and write transforms. So um, in Java, in summary, Java has a native implementation for JDBC IO and then port to Python or Go SDK through the uh, cross language uh, framework. So uh, the question then, we have different language and uh, each language, of course, they have different uh, type primitives. Like for Java, integers are all of finite bytes, uh, either int or long, or actually they are short or others. Mm, like floating points and uh, there are more complex um, types like Ahmed just mentioned in his talk, like for timestamps and uh, for fixed precision numerics, we use some Java object type, not the primitives. And how can uh, JDBC IO that built in the Java SDK and it uses this kind of like Java objects, how can it pass to our Python side? And in the Python, similarly, we have like integer, but Python integer is of infinite precision by construction. And also, of course, we, we, we also can use like third party library, the commonly used NumPy, and uh, which has a C uh, type similar to C. And uh, we also have like floating points, and uh, the time step also has some Python built in top, built in type. How can we convert from the Java? object type to like Python timestamp type conventionally date time. And uh, these are all done by the Beam Portable Schema that I would like to talk today. So the Portable Beam Schemas, um, the design doc, I share the link here, is some design done in 2019. And uh, I think most of the arch framework is done. And uh, this is the introduction um, sentence of this design doc. The beam schemas are a new and enhanced type system for beam make element structure explicit to support new concise transforms and uh, provide a relational style optimization and execution and, uh, and so on. The type system in the portable, uh, in the beam is built on top of this, uh, Portable beam schemas, and uh, in each SDK, we mean you mean uh, each language, um, like for example Java SDK. The portable schema is acts like in this architecture. On top of it, there is a SDK schema that is like for example we have a Java schema class that uh, handles the schemas, and uh, then there is a schema translation that uh, used to. Uh, translate from the SDK schema to the proto schema. Proto schema is uh, based on the proto buff, so it um, provides a language agnostic way to define those schemas. And in each SDK, we have a schema translation um, implementation that translate from and to the proto schema to the SDK schema. So the, this is a schema. Schema defines the data type. And uh, the other part for the data processing is the actual value of those data. So now we have the schema. We can also organize and uh, have an architecture to deal with our actual data value um, in a language independent way. That is, uh, we have a schema, then the coders we have coders use the information of the SDK schema in each SDK that encodes our values. The values is represented by the user type or the language built-in type into some strings. And the string is really very compact form of the data. For example, uh, like a double, it, it's stringed to us uh, eight, eight bytes, uh, something like that. So the string is 
really language independent, independent, similar to the proto schema. So they both are language independent. And on top of that, um, the schema translation is used to uh, handle the S language dependent schema and the coders decode the strings to the our user types or vice versa. Using this uh, architecture, the cross language transform is actually very, very natural because we have then both schema and the data in a language independent representation. And then on top of that, we just need to have the language dependent um, implementation that uh, talk with the same uh, kind of schema of data. So these are the primitive types, like for example, the supported uh, language, including Java, Bing, and Go. And uh, for the coders and uh, Bing portable schemas, we as uh, with them effectively, Bing has its its own uh, type system, has its own primitives and defines the way it encodes and decodes the, these primitives and from bytes and the integers to the floating point and to the uh, strings. And, uh, and this design doc also mentions in each language in implementation what this being portable types corresponds to. And some of them are implemented very early and some of them are implemented recently, like for example, the the short int implementation in Python is done like uh, 2.46, like two versions before. And um, and anyways, know that this all primitives are supported in both Java and Python, and uh, most of them are supported in Go. And for Go, they are still um, short int and uh, and uh, small int are not compatible with the portable schemas. Otherwise, we so we now have the primitives, and the primitives is not all the data as Ahmed just uh, mentioned. We have some more um, complex types, and uh, for example, the timestamp, and it's defined differently in each SDK, and. Um, for example, in SQL, there is the very traditional SQL. We even do not have a, a arbitrarily long um, stream, and it's defined as either a fixed string or varchar, that is the variable string with uh, some maximum size. So this type also has some arg argument. In this way, in this case, the varchar has an argument of its size. The size is also a value of some type. So in to handle these more, di more uh, complex types and uh, not only Bing and uh, usually more, most systems are like for example, Avro, we define logical types that is um, represented uh, by some primi primitive types. In Bing, uh, due to some historical region, we have two types of logical types. The first one is the non-portable logical types that before the portable schema uh, framework come out that was originally used in JDBC. And uh, for example, how JDBCL handles these varchar types, it defines a logical types also called a varchar with an identifier like this. And uh, that logical type has a payload that is the uh, a uh, serialized form of this logical type class. Uh, by, by means serialized is used the Java built-in serialized. So inside the Java SDK across the machines, they, they recognize this uh, logical type because they can use Java built-in um, functionality to deserialize. But then the Python cannot uh, uh, recognize it and uh, we are just give a, not a recognized uh, uh, we just gave an error in the cross line. Just, this is a Stack Overflow link. If I will put the, uh, the slides um, available. And this is a long, long standing issue for the cross line JDBC error. You see this error if you ever use it uh, for, the, for the virtual, like uh, more binary types. And this is really because they 
use a non-portable logic type that uses the serialized and deserialized functionality of Java SDK that cannot be used in Python SDK. So then we have the portable language, portable bin schema and a platform. We then define a, a portable logic types. Uh, by portable, it means it can be used everywhere, not only in Java, not only in Python. And it has an identifier of the URN in this form. So it's a bin logic type, just like this one. This one is just used for all unknown Java uh, non-portable logic types. It has this form, and um, it has a representation type and a language type. The language type is just the, like for example, a timestamp in Java, the language type is the, like java.time.timestamp or java.timestamp. And the representation type is um, formally some type that uh, can be recognized across the SDK is either a bin portable primitives or some aggregate types, for example, a bin row that um, contains primitives. So the logic type will handle the conversion be between the language type to and the representation type. And then the representation type is just uh, some, either some primitives or some aggregate types. And uh, we can use the coders to handle them to encode uh, to the string that is language independent. And the logic types can also have arguments. For example, in this virtual, it has an argument of its maximum allowable load size. So the architecture is then like this. Um, at the highest, highest level, is language dependent. And we define the language type of, like for example, the, this micros instant um, logic type. In Java, it's a Java timestamp. In Python, it's a bin util timestamp. And the logic type class handles the uh, conversion between the language type and the representation type. Representation type is language independent. It, in both cases, it's just a row, a bin row of, of, um, of two numbers. One is the second uh, epoch second, and another is the micros. And uh, to encode this data, we have coders and uh, use the row coder because this is row. We can use a row coder to encode it to strings. And uh, here we have some standard logical types. Like for example, this macro instant handles the instant uh, type. And uh, we also have millis instant handles the Joda instant. This is really uh, another historic reason for Java. We have like in Java 7, we use Joda instant uh, all the time. And then Java 8 introduced the Java instant. And the Java instant is in maintenance mode, but it's still used primary in Bing. So we need to handle both. And then the fixed bits are used for binary and the fixed char for, for char, var char for var char. And these are steadily uh, introduced in recent Bing versions uh, in the Python SDK. So at the end of the day, we now have more types supported for the Java, uh, for, sorry, for the cross-language JDBCL. And uh, at, the, at this moment, it handles most uh, common uh, types in the SQL. And once we have those um, types, then the implementation of uh, P-transform in cross line is very straightforward. This is like a uh, example of write to big write to JDBC, and we have this this SQL schema. It has some var char and a fixed char, and has some time stamp and some uh, fixed uh, precision decimal. We use a uh, NAND tuple as uh, the input uh, type of the P collection, and uh, the really the the part that is really working is a uh, very short. It's it's just a uh, P transform like a usual Python P transform, and you assign some configurations and run it on the data flow. This is a result. This is a snapshot. For example, I run, I write a one million row, and it like takes a minute to to do so. And similarly for read, we have both read and partition read, and this is like the code snapshot. It's really uh, very compact. 
uh, form um, because it's Python. And uh, we just need to provide some configurations. And also, we needed to register this Millis instance because for some historic reasons, uh, both in Java side, uh, both uh, Joda instance and uh, the and the Java instance is used, and the JDBC is used Joda instance. So we needed to overwrite the default um, type handle to use the Millis instance. And um, similarly for partition reader, it's just uh, we have a different configuration, and uh, we have some and right, like read one million row to from the JDBC that we from the ser uh, database server we, we just written. And uh, also, it takes like a minute to do so. And uh, this is uh, another example of um, concrete one that uh, read from a real source to write to another real source. And here is read from the JDBC uh, and write to a big query using the storage write API that is built upon the schema transform that Ahmed just mentioned. Is. So this, this pipeline uses two cross language trans P transform. One is the, both the sync and the uh, both the source and the sync. And uh, again, um, it takes like uh, several minutes to, to process like one minute, one, one million rows, and uh, we can see the result correct. We can see that. So um, what needs to make this pipeline run? For all runners, including the data flow runner, in, in locally, we just need a Python environment and a Java environment. When we run the Python script, it will automatically download the released version of the expansion service jar. It's a big jar and uh, start the uh, expansion service automatically. If we want to test with a direct runner, we, want, we need to additionally uh, have a Docker environment because we need to run Java SDK and they, we release, uh, also release container image for that. So if you are running on direct runner and has a, a Docker environment um, available, it will automatically pull the, the released uh, Bing SDK, Java SDK image. And uh, similarly for portable runner, you also need a Docker, um, Docker, um, yeah. So the last thing I would like to mention is um, some uh, practical one, and also very close to uh, Ahmed mentioned uh, we still have some logic types not supported in Python. For example, the date and the time, although we supported date time, but not date and time, which is quite annoying. But uh, we have some workaround for it. For example, you can implement these logic types yourself. I think it's just like several 10 or 20 lines of code. You just need to define the way to convert it from two logic types and uh, uh, a, a language type and a, and a represent, representation type, or you can cast your type to string in a, using a query statement. Like for example, you you cast the the date and the time type as a text, then it will give you strings and as a workaround currently. Yeah, that's all one I want to share for today. That's the, yeah, thank you.